Hello and welcome to Energy. On today's show, we'll meet with a pharmacist who's offering free health advice and we'll see what's in store for O'Fallon Theatre Works. This and more coming up on Energy. A new artist is set to appear at the O'Fallon Cultural Arts Gallery. The O'Fallon Cultural Arts Gallery welcomes professional artist Grant Niffen. Grant, a retired teacher, has been exhibiting his colorful works of art throughout the St. Louis area for years, and now he's bringing it to O'Fallon. The pieces I'll be having are often dealing with uh, music subjects I like bluegrass and uh, country and western music, and so that's often a subject that I do. I enjoy doing wildlife. And so just different scenes. And so there's kind of a, there's kind of a whole mix to it. And so, but it's that kind of subject matter. Grant credits his expressive use of color, line, and storytelling to his childhood influences. You know, ever since I was a kid, I just loved American things, you know, the cowboy movies. Uh, and so on and so forth. And so as I got older and interested in art, uh, some of my favorite artists were Thomas Hart Benton, who was a Missouri artist, and he was part of what was called regionalism. And so it was kind of the Midwest and the country and things. And so I very much gravitated toward that. And so I was a regionalist uh, painter for, for a long time. And then uh, in teaching school, I also taught the, art, the AP art history and various things like that. And so as you study and become aware of the different movements and styles over time, I started letting that influence my work also. And so my work has evolved from basically, uh, you know, regionalist type uh, rural scenes and landscapes into, I call it kind of an early modernism. I've combined cubism and aspects of that and some of these tenets of early modernism, color, flatness, uh, things such as that, and then I apply them to the subjects that I love. Other influences in Grant's artwork came from the Golden Age. As a kid, I was just fascinated uh, looking in different books and magazines. I was really attracted to the illustrators of what has been termed the Golden Age or the late 1800s and the early half of the first of the 20th century. People like N.C. Wyeth and Frank Schoonover and, and, and people like that, because you know, they, they were the ones that illustrated the books and they were the, they were the special effects. Like any artist, Grant puts his heart and soul into creating his work, which he loves seeing others enjoy. You know, it's something I'm, I'm passionate about and very much, uh, very much enjoy. And so, again, I love my subject matters and, and enjoy the, the process of, of creating the pieces. And I think a lot of people enjoy them because there's a lot of rich color contrast and they, and they relate to the subject matters and, uh, and enjoy that. And so it's not something that's just esoteric or just very intellectual, such as mark making and, and non-objective. And so I think a lot of people enjoy my work when they see it. If you would like to see Grant Niffen's exhibit, it is free and available for viewing at the O'Fallon Cultural Arts Gallery located in the Renaud Spirit Center, 2650 Tri-Sport Circle. For more information, visit o'fallon.mo.us slash parks and rec. Take control of your health by attending our free lecture series. The Renaud Spirit Center's mission is to be your total wellness haven. So along with its top tier fitness center, refreshing aquatics and dynamic exercise classes, the RSC provides information in the form of the Optimal Health Lecture Series, headed by someone who knows a thing or two about wellness. I have um, six degrees and five certifications. Um, I love education, whether I learn it or teach it, either way. Um, I am board certified in ambulatory care pharmacotherapy. I have a master's in um, medication management. I have a doctorate in pharmacy. 
Um, so I feel like I am well equipped with education as far as nutrition, exercise, health and wellness, the holistic approach, the medication, and all of it. I just enjoy helping people a lot, and I think that's what makes it special. My purpose is basically to try to engage the community in um, different disease states, knowledge about different diseases that they may have, knowledge about medications that they may be on, knowledge about health and wellness. Basically, I mean, my passion, my desire um, is to educate people so that they can use or empower them so that they can use the material that I give them to improve their life. Mostly, I talk about different disease states. So I have gastrointestinal disorders, I have migraines, I have you know central nervous system, cardiovascular, diabetes. Um, plus, I also do, like I said, health and wellness. So a lot of nutrition, exercise for the elderly. A big focus is on diabetes, a big focus, because I'm a certified diabetes educator, so there's a big focus on that. Um, and nutritional talks, dietary supplements, because that seems to be a big desire. Also, stress management. Um, I do spiritual talks as well, so there's a spiritual wellness one, positive power, so pretty much anything. The series encourages participants to be engaged in the material presented. My whole personal style is they don't leave the lecture, they don't leave the presentation until they've asked me at least one question, or until we've addressed one of their issues or one of their concerns, because that's important to me. I mean, like I said, they're here to listen, they're here to to, to gain something. They have an agenda, so I want to make sure that I touch that base with them. Get the lowdown on topics and times for the Optimal Health Lectures in your Parks and Rec Guide or from the Renaud Spirit Center website. Next up is our employee spotlight featuring Mike Ray from the Parks Department. Here's more on Mike and his position with the city. Have you ever wondered how our parks are kept so clean? And what happens when playground equipment or a picnic table needs to be repaired or updated? Mike Ray from the Parks Department is one of many who make sure our parks are in tip-top shape and safe for play. I'm on a special project crew. So what we do is we add new features to the existing parks. So say down at Sports Park, we tore out the, new, the old playground and then we added a new state-of-the-art playground with safety tile. And then over at Canals Park, we added a multi-use court, which consists of a basketball court and a hockey court. And we just do those things throughout the city. We just, we just add new features to the parks. There we go. Mike's other responsibilities include equipment repair, fixing culverts, concrete laying, and in the winter, snow plowing. So with all this work, keeping busy is never an issue, especially when there are challenges thrown in the mix. The most challenging thing would be uh, the uprise we're on a project and also we got to be pulled off for an emergency. Um, to stop what you're doing when you're in the zone and to go solve another problem. When it comes to challenges, there is one challenge Mike definitely enjoys. I like the most is concrete work. Um, it's challenging. You can be real creative with it. And then the finished project, it just comes out amazing and then everybody really seems to enjoy it. Mike has been working for the city for a long time and from the sounds of it, he is here to stay. I've been with the city, I'm going on my 10th year. Uh, it's been fun, it's been challenging, but I enjoy coming to work every day because new things come up and learn new skills. I like the challenges. Uh, everybody seems to respect everybody. Um, which is a big plus to me. I treat people how I want to be treated. And then it's just, I just enjoy coming to work. Working in this field offers Mike other great benefits that give him a sense of pride. I enjoy watching like little kids or older people enjoy what we have put up. So watching people enjoy what we have done or what we put up really makes everything satisfying. The City of O'Fallon's Cultural Arts Division has been awarded a $10,000 grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to support the city's O'Fallon Theatre Works Community Theatre Program. O'Fallon Theatre Works has been an active part of the community since 2001. Annual productions at the O'Fallon Municipal Center include a spring musical, a summer youth theatre production, and a drama or comedy in the fall. These funds will help strengthen some of the technical aspects of the productions. 
Now we'll take a look at O'Fallon Theatre Works in action with their newest production of Bye Bye Birdie. Who doesn't like the musicals of yesteryear? The songs, the dancing, the nostalgia? One such musical is getting a new life right here in O'Fallon. Bye Bye Birdie, which began as a Broadway musical and became a hit movie, will be at O'Fallon Theatre Works in November. The story is loosely based on Elvis Presley's enlistment in the Army back in 1957. It starred Dick Van Dyke and Janet Leigh and launched the career of Anne Margaret. Directing the O'Fallon Theatre Works production of Bye Bye Birdie is Katie Gildefry. Well, I always liked this show because it's set in the 50s, um, and then the music is very catchy and fun, and um, having that Elvis-type character is very um, nostalgic and fun for, um, for the local actors to emulate that type of character. Katie assembled a very talented cast to bring this musical to life. Friends and simple hearty from the brimming cup to live. Good. Upstairs. But Daddy. Upstairs. Their talents range from dancers who have been dancing their whole lives to talented vocalists to um, our lead, Rosie, um, is the name of her character, is also a choreographer herself, so she's very talented. Um, and then we've got some fantastic actors and we also have a lot of people, um, teenagers and some middle schoolers and they're joining us for their first show ever. So we've got a wide range of talent. Creating a set design for this production was quite the challenge for the O'Fallon Theatre Works team. The set design was difficult because um, there are seven different scenes uh, that require their own scenery. So we have two different train stations that we needed to create. We needed to, um, we needed to create a kitchen uh, true to the 1950s. So we have an award-winning set designer. Chris Lanham and Ellie Lanham have come and designed a beautiful set for us. So we've, we've come up with some really great designs to blast everyone back to this nostalgic, vintage 1952 era. Costumes are beautiful, just beautiful, and everybody's um, having fun researching different dance moves true to that time and learning the, the jargon of that era and how, um, how women weren't necessarily valued as much as they are today in their marriage and didn't have that equal voice. Um, I think it's important to highlight how far we have come as women. So the show will open November 3rd. It will run the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and then the 10th, 11th, and 12th. And on Fridays and Saturdays, the show starts at 8 p.m. And on Sundays, we have a 2 o'clock matinee. Come out and join us. We'd love to have you. We can't wait to send you to Sweet Apple, Ohio from 1952. It's time to check in with this week's community calendar. For a wonderful holiday tradition, bring your family to O'Fallon's Celebration of Lights for a drive through the park in your own vehicle, or book a specialty ride in advance. No reservations are needed for the drive through but the specialty rides require reservations to be made at least two weeks in advance. See more details, including pricing, at o'fallon.mo.us slash col. Parents, are you looking for a night out without spending a lot of money on childcare for your kids? Look no further. Drop your children off for a fun evening at the Renat Spirit Center, where they'll have a great time playing games, swimming, and eating pizza too. Swimming will be held from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. To participate, kids must be registered in advance by November 15th. It all takes place on Friday, November 17th from 5.30 to 9 p.m. Join the Renat Spirit Center for cards, coffee, and friendship. This active club meets twice a month and coffee and cards will be provided. Registration ends five days before the program start date. The club will meet at the Renat Spirit Center on Wednesday, November 15th from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Cost is $2 for residents and $3 for non-residents. Don't wait until after the holiday season to make that New Year's resolution. Get a jump start now before all the holiday goodies attach to your waistline by hiring a personal trainer at the Renaud Spirit Center. The personal trainers will tailor a new workout program to fit your needs. 
You will be pushed, motivated, and encouraged to become the best you possible. You will also learn proper weight lift techniques and develop exercise habits that will give you excellent results. Contact Ty Joyce for more information or to set up an appointment at 636-474-8122. That's all for today's show. Thanks for joining us. See you next time on Energy.